Hi, this is Charlotte from Unleashed Education. Today I'm revisiting the editing on this photo of Jessie the Black Labrador taken at the beach a few years ago. Lightroom has some really great new masking tools and I'm finding lots of different uses for them. And one of the uses that I've found that is very helpful as a pet photographer is the ability to quickly and easily remove color casts. Now, when you're photographing a black dog, and especially if you're shooting in mixed lighting conditions, so maybe if you're shooting with backlight where you've got strong light coming from behind that's a different color temperature to the light that's hitting the front of the dog, which might be sort of you know cooler ambient light, you often end up with blue in the blacks. Now, I think taking all the color out of a black dog is not the right thing to do because black dogs will definitely pick up some colors. It's what makes them look like they fit into the surroundings. If you take all the color out you end up with a black and white dog in a color world and it just looks a bit strange. So this image here I've already done some basic edits. This was the raw file so this is what this file started off as. As you can see I've gone through with the sliders in Lightroom here and just really brought some warmth and life back into the image. So one thing that we've ended up with though is this stubborn blue color cast in the black fur. You can probably see that quite easily, but a technique that I like to use to really determine what's going on in these areas is to hover the cursor over the black areas. And where we're looking is the RGB values under the histogram over there. So you'll see when I move this around, let's just stop. You'll see that the red value is 14, the green value is 14, and the blue value is 20%. So that really indicates that there is a blue color cast. It's not neutral looking black fur. Something that is, it makes it even more obvious is when you boost up the vibrance and the saturation. Now, obviously this is not what we want the image to look like, but it's a really handy tool for diagnosing and really clearly picturing things like color cast. And you can see that blue in a lot of the fur. So how do we get rid of it? That's the big thing. Lightroom has some great new masking tools. The one that we're gonna be using is color range. So let's just click that. Gives us a little eyedropper that we can click anywhere on the image. So let's click somewhere that's blue. Now I have this overlay mode set up as white on black. Most people will have it on color overlay because that's what's standard. So you'll probably see something more like this. I find the white on black overlay gives a more accurate picture of exactly what is and isn't being selected with these tools. I do turn it on and off though, so you can just press O on the keyboard to toggle that mask on and off. So the color range, it basically has selected the color that we clicked on, and then we can refine that. So basically how specific that color is. If we take it down, it's only selecting colors that are very, very similar to that color. If we take it up, it's expanding the range of colors on either side of the specific one that we've selected. So we wanna take that down quite a way to a point where we're just kind of seeing it on those areas where we can see the blue when the vibrance of saturation is all boosted up. So probably even, probably even around there I think is quite good. Now, if we zoom out at this point, you can actually see that it's picked up that color in some other areas of the image. We only want it picked up in the subject. So we'll need to do an intersect. So the available buttons under the mask here are add and subtract, but there's a secret sneaky hidden button and you can access that by pressing option and clicking the intersect button that comes up instead. Now it'll ask you, what do you want to intersect with? And you just have to go select subject. So it'll take the color range mask, take the subject mask, and only give you a mask of what is present in both of those masks. That's what Intersect does. Now let's turn this mask off. And what we're gonna do is counteract that blue by adding the opposite color, which is yellow. So let's add some yellow here and see how it's cleaning up that blue color cast on the fur really nicely. Now there is in that blue, so blue is never really completely and only blue. Generally there's another color cast in there as well. I can see a little bit of magenta. So I'm gonna take the green across a little bit as well. That's picked up more blue. So sometimes you might need to have a bit of a play around with these. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Another thing that you can do with the color range is 
You know how we clicked on the image with the little eyedropper? You can actually click on the image multiple times to sample from lots of different areas to build the library of colors that you're going to be able to do adjustments to. So if we zoom in here, make sure that color range is selected, gives us a little eyedropper again. Now, if we click somewhere, it's just gonna replace the color that we've already selected. We wanna to add to that. So we hold down shift and it changes the cursor so that you get a little plus next to the eyedropper. So I'm gonna click in a few more areas. There we go. Until you basically can't see any more blue being selected. Maybe up here a little bit. Now you only, you don't get unlimited sample eyedroppers here. You only get five, so you have to use them wisely. If you click more than that, it'll tell you you can only have five. So we've chosen our five and that's actually pretty much covered all of that blue. So now let's have a look and see what this actually looks like without that vibrance and saturation boosted all the way up. Just double click these to take them down. Now the whole image looks a little bit washed out now because our eyes have adjusted to the super, <laughs> the super saturated, super vibrant look that we created by taking those sliders all the way up. It will take your eyes a little bit to adjust to that. But if we take this on and off, look at all that blue that we got rid of, pretty good. Like I said before, you don't wanna take all of the color out of black because it just looks wrong. So you can easily dial back that effect by just taking your color temperature sliders to a point where you're possibly seeing a little touch of blue because that's sort of normal, but you're not seeing the overwhelming blue cast that you saw um, when we first started out with this image. Now, when you do take color cast out of black, sometimes it does tend to look a little bit flat because that color is what gives it some of its contrast. So after you've done that, you may need to go back in and actually add a little bit more contrast into those blacks. Very easy to do, just create a new mask, select subject, turn that overlay off because that's done a pretty good job of selecting the subject and then go and increase the contrast. So I would probably take the contrast slider up a little bit, maybe the blacks down a touch. Doesn't really need a lot. Sometimes you might be able to add a little bit of dehaze and that could be a good way of getting your blacks black again. So let's turn that one off and on. There we go, a nice black dog. So let's take a look at both of those adjustments off. Very blue dog and on a beautiful black dog with gorgeous rich black fur. That's exactly what we wanted to achieve. So that's it. Basically a really easy way to get rid of a blue color cast in black fur. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in our next editing toolbox tutorial.